Today's episode of Desert Wood Days with Kathy Blaze is sponsored by Dork Publishing, expanding minds through fantasy since 2018. Learn more at the Dork Publishing website, www.dorcpublishing.com. I want to visit all the places nobody goes. I want to teach all the things that nobody knows. I want to grow wings, leave the coop, learn to fly. Bungee jump from the tallest building in Dubai. I want to fly around town in my UFO. I want to eat real food, not the GMOs. I want to make moves, call the shots like the boss. I want to love like I never lost. Welcome back to Desert Wood Days, and I am your host, Kathy Blaze. Today, I would like to welcome Mr. Mark Greenewald. Welcome. Hello there. Hello there. Such Hello. a pleasure to meet you, Mark. Good to meet you. Good, good, good. Looking forward to this. Yes, I've been excited to meet you as well with all this talent you have here. Oh, thank you so much. But yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, find out what you have to come up to talk with because I have no idea what you're going to ask. Yes, me. yes, yes. <laughs> but first off, thank you for joining us today. Pleasure. You know what? It is so exciting when we have someone with, you know, it is. I can't say he's an artist. You're you're an artist. You're a photographer. You're a musician. You do body painting. You just have so many things that I'm so interested in talking about today. But what I'd like to do is just get to know a little bit about you and let our audience know a little bit about you. Okay. Are you a native of Arizona? I'm actually from Pennsylvania. Oh. I was born and raised in Pennsylvania. Um, Matter of fact, I uh, went to Penn State. Okay. Uh, electrical engineer is what I, I took there. And uh, that's what brought me out to Arizona. I actually got my first job out of college was in Fort Huachuca down in Sierra Vista. Okay. And uh, as an electrical engineer. So that's what brought me to Arizona. Wow, wonderful. We're glad we got you out of yeah. here. Yeah. Okay. I got to check out that necklace that you're wearing. That is pretty cool. Yeah, this is a guitar pick I had made that's got my... Uh, my, my website on it so I can always say yeah. there you go yes how yeah. cool it's how like a cool, business card how cool is this just wear your business card around your neck yeah I mean this is nice I mean you know we have them in our little us ladies care things in our little purse and then it gets full but hey when we can wear it around our neck that's even better <laughs> and then I can restock it I got green ones too I can oh, flip it around okay. and it's green on the other side that is wonderful. How did you come up with that idea? Well, ironically, the guitar holder, you can get these at Guitar Center. So it's, that, that's, um, and then the, the idea for uh, getting a pick printed is something that uh, band mates of mine had uh -huh. back in the days. And uh, they actually made one for me. I used to be called Mark the Spark <laughs> when I played uh, in Hagerstown, Maryland. Oh, I was okay. at a band called Center Alley. Wonder See, and that's what artists do. We think of all these little things like this. Yeah. Wow, that is cool. Nobody I, does business cards anymore. So this is that's something true. that, you know, you can kind of hand someone and then mm -hmm. whether they keep it or not, it's... it's a, and that's something someone would keep. So it's just so yeah. unique. It's different. Yeah. Yeah. Especially musicians, guitarists. Right. Like, like they're playing a card and they actually have something to use. <laughs> right. So you're, you're, you're also an author. I forgot to throw that out there also. Um, I... I'd like to start off, how did you get in this industry initially? What was it that inspired you? Well, I, whenever you say industry, it's kind of funny because I do dabble in all kinds of yes. things. So it's it's um, different stories for different ones, but art is really what started So me. you initially started body body painting? Was that that's, where you started? That's been about 20 years ago. So where did the engineer jump into? I mean, because... The engineer is just the... the <laughs> You know, it's funny. The engineering people are, are like, wow, you do all this art stuff. Yes. And then the art people are all like, you do engineering? You right. know, it's kind of like it is two separate things. But there's quite a few of us out there that are like that. Uh, it, know, because it's such a different release. It's a release from yeah. being that techie person and doing that type of stuff. And to be able to sit and relax and just yeah dabble and do what you, you're passionate about. Yeah, well, the engineering actually turned into lighting design. Because oh, that okay. was like... Um, a, a segment of electrical engineering that had a little bit of creativity to it. So that's where that went. But now as far as art, I got to say that that's just kind of evolved from, um, you know, even in kindergarten, I had on my report card, they said, he, you know, stays in the lines a little better than the other kid. You know, so uh. at, at a young age, I was starting to really enjoy it. And my mother sent me to um, art lessons, you know, age eight, nine or so. Okay. And I was learning shading and perspective and all those things. And then I got into oil painting, okay. you know, I took some oil painting and that was fun. And then body painting just was uh, taken out one step, I want to say different, 
because you could do I could do paintings and drawings and show someone and it you know the the amount of time they spend on looking at it's like oh yeah that's very right. nice or whatever but as soon as I did a body painting there's all these questions like well how did you get you know right. how did you get in that and make it yeah. look so natural then it's in, it, yeah it just uh it, it seems like it inspires people to right. to get more involved with right. looking at it right you know, so, could you say who was the first um, artist that you may have noticed that did body painting that inspired you? Joanne Gare, and she did. She's the one that did the um, Demi Moore uh -huh. on Vanity Fair, where she had the business suit paint uh -huh. on her. And then more importantly, she did, the, or not more importantly, but she did the swimsuits on uh -huh. Sports Illustrated. Oh, okay. And that's really when I saw those, I was like, wow, this is really cool what they're doing in Hollywood. But then there was a, a, a fellow that I, I ended up meeting later. His name was Pasher. That I was living in Nashville for a, a short while, actually doing songwriting in Nashville. And um, Pasher was someone that did uh, body painting in Nashville. I was like, so you can do this and not have to be in L.A. or something? And I was like, well, I guess of course you, you can. You can do it anywhere. <laughs> yeah, so so that, that led me to say, I want to try this. Yeah. And while I was in Nashville, I kept getting these ideas. And I actually did some Photoshop renderings of this is what I would do if I did it. And then uh, my wife and I, we had one son at the time. I have two sons now. Um, but we moved back to Arizona. And um, when I got here, I, I want to say Arizona is a little bit more open to body painting yes. than Nashville, okay. if you can imagine. So, And anyhow, so I took some of the ideas and just said, I'm going to try this. And I did one with a friend. And then her, you know, another friend said, do my back, you know. Yes. So I did that. And then one by one, I kind of had a portfolio started. Wonderful. Do you um, have a, a certain genre that you um, steer yeah. to, or um, how do you decide on what you want to do? I've always been a sci-fi geek, you oh. know, and um, I, I, as a kid, the the, um, the, the uh, fantasy novels are what I started reading, but mostly because of the covers. And there was two artists I really loved, Boris Vallejo was one, and Frank Frazetta. Their, their work is what really inspired me so okay. I would say that almost anytime I'm doing a body painting where I get to choose what it's going to be it's got some kind of monster or sci-fi swords and sorcery type thing to yes. it but that's not to say that's all I've done because so many times I'm doing what a client is looking for right, right. or I come up with some themes that I start going through but um, right, right. it's been so diverse yeah that is awesome I had the opportunity beforehand to look through your portfolio and see some of your work and then just some amazing stuff in there. Thank you. I mean, totally amazing. I mean, you know, we look at some of these movies. Um, so in, and that's what I want to talk about in movies, mm -hmm. how much body painting do we see in movies that we don't realize that is actually body painting? Do you, would you know that? Well, um, it's, it's kind of interesting that I, I started the body paint side of things. But that led to a little bit of special effects. Okay. And then so once I, I, I learned a little bit of special effects, and I, I should mention um, what really got me to dive into it. I was teaching, and I, I got asked to go teach body painting in Florida and actually in England okay. and uh, Belgium. I did a little bit of teaching. And when I'd go to these uh, to teach, I'd have my little segment, uh -huh. but then I had all the time in the world to go watch other people teach. And so I went and watched some special effects where they were, you know, doing little scars mm -hmm. or whatever with liquid latex and cotton and tissue paper and then peeling it up and making it look just awful, you know, yes. and I was like, that's fun. I don't want to learn that. So I learned that. And how, how, how long did it take you to get to that point where you were considered, um, I'm going to say a subject matter expert on doing body painting that people were starting to call you to do this type of work? I got real lucky and had Airbrush Action Magazine um, find out that I was doing body painting. There wasn't many people doing this mm. in, in, you know, 20 years ago. Uh, I wouldn't say I'm the first, obviously. You know, there's people doing it back into the 60s even. But um, somehow they found me and asked me to come teach a class in Las Vegas. Okay. And while I was there, they interviewed me and um, put, my, um, put an uh, article with me in a full page uh, oh. picture of mine. And once I got in Airbrush Action Magazine, suddenly it's almost like I was established. And yeah. it, was, it was kind of funny how that little piece of publicity. Oh. And the one other fun thing about that story was um, they have this little tech thing that says, what products do you use? Well, I use uh, Badger airbrushes and okay. Badger compressors. And that magazine is a little bit tilted towards Iwata, which is a different brand. Oh. So Badger 
got a hold of me and said, thank you for using our product. If you ever need anything, let us know. And That's suddenly they awesome. wanted to send me Yes, I kind of became endorsed by a yes. badger with that, so I was very that's appreciative. That's awesome. Sometimes yeah. that's all you need to do is, the, is name drop. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it wasn't intentional, but I was like, uh, I was so glad that uh, how that worked out. Do you still use that product? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. The, the, fu the, the, the funny thing about the story, too, was I bought this airbrush. The, the airbrush I was using at that time, when I was like eight or nine years old, uh, from a little hobby shop because I, I wanted to get into airbrushing as a kid uh -huh. and I didn't do much with it back then but um, it, it lasted all those years right. and then you know now I was in my back then 20s well or, even as a kid you must have liked what you were seeing yeah. I mean so it worked for you yep that is awesome but we're going to talk more about I want to get into the the um, filmmaking part and the use of body painting and mm -hmm. filmmaking. I want to learn a little bit about that from you today, okay? How much um, body painting are we seeing in um, film productions? And not even realizing that that was someone like you that body painted this suit on someone or this face or who, whoever knows what else they're body, body painting, but... How much would you say that we're seeing in film productions? Well, I think I think there's quite a few um, uh, paintings that you see, especially the superhero things that mm -hmm. have come around. Um, Mystique from X Men is one that I oh. really love, but now that's got some prosthetics in it too. So not only is it the painting, but uh -huh. um, you know that they're actually um, making molds and and um, sculpting things that go on the face and the oh, arms and the body yes. and everything. Yes. So there's more to it than just the paint, but there's some that are just, just painting. But Yeah, so you brought um, something for us to see today, too. Yeah, also. this is, um, let's see, which camera? Wow, awesome. This is your camera. There you go. Oh, oh this, this way, there you go. So, yeah, this is, um, this is um, I made this for a music video. Oh. Uh, Ryan Tree was uh, the guy. And it's uh, made with liquid latex. These little, these were glued on out of um, kind of a foam. Oh. And then this was a bald cap. And there was a, this was a monkey mask at one mm. point. So it's soft. But this actually, the, the actor was able to wear this. And um, this was all painted. And um, there's actual teeth that I, uh, yeah. you know, that you. They, they look so real. <laughs> yeah, you, those are the ones you buy for Halloween. Uh. But I just glued those in. And then by the time we put this on, we glued it real close to his eyes. And uh -huh. then he had like uh, contacts in that uh -huh. were really evil looking. Oh, okay. And um, he was able to actually, the, the, the jaw actually was oh. able to move. So he was able to move in this. And then we actually did a full suit that was really like a spandex mm. outfit that kind of matched along with that. But So how, putting it on him... I mean, does it just slip on? It or stretched. Get... It stretched enough. I mean, it's it's. Oh, okay. You know, and it's uh, made of foam. We did rip it under here just a little bit oh, okay. whenever we put it on, but um, and we had to do it for three days. Oh. You know, so three different days. We filmed this down at the domes. Uh. If you've heard of that down in uh, Casa Grande area, oh, okay. The place it's a little evil anyway. <laughs> and then then we also went up to um, Prescott and uh. filmed and, and up there. So if you get a chance to check out the video, the funny thing is with the video. There's like 20 of these guys. We only oh. did one, oh. but it's all composite. What video is that? Ryan Tree uh, is is uh, the name of the artist, oh, okay. um, and it's uh, it's just a music video of his. Oh, how long did it take you to make that? I don't know. I would say you know it was on and off doing pieces and parts, but um, maybe two to three hours of oh. prep time. Oh, okay. But then once you put it on, you, you know we still added it. You know added some some more to it. Right. Oh my goodness. He's, he's pretty, That's a fun one. <laughs> yes, it's fun. He's scary looking. I, I wouldn't want to run into him in the dark. Yeah. <laughs> and then I've actually done a few where, like, I, I've got a mold made of my face where they did, like, the life casting. Uh -huh. And then I sculpted some stuff for my own self. And I I, I, I used it mostly for a uh, audition for uh, the TV show Face Off. And I oh, sent it in. Okay. But um, it's very interesting then to, to sculpt clay on it, make a mold of that, and then actually glue it to your face. And then try to airbrush with one eye closed, oh, you know, and yeah. then this alcohol-based paint I was using that time. And so it really stings. Right. When it gets I'm sure it does. Yeah. So you also do photography also, right? I do, yeah. Yes. I, got, I got into photography uh, when I, mostly when I realized these body paintings, they're um, evanescent is a good word for it. They're gone, you know, yes. after the day you do it. In other words, That's true. you know, a painting lasts forever, mm -hmm. but these body paints are washed down that's the drain. That's true. So the photography is all that's left. Right. So you better make sure you get good that's pictures. That's true. You know? That's true. I mean, 
that's a lot of work. And once it's done, it's done. Yeah. Yeah. And I trusted some photographers to take pictures and they did a good job. And then sometimes I found out they're like, oh, well, you can't use that for a calendar or, right. you know, because you they're the paint. owner. They're of the it. owner. So yes. I just really wanted my own ownership of it. And then so I started just making sure I had really good camera equipment. Good and great. then I started enjoying taking pictures of all kinds Wonderful. of other things. Yeah. Well, you brought some media today. Why don't we take a look at some Absolutely. of the work that you brought today? Yeah. Okay, so um, this is a, a body paint I did at a place called the Alwyn House. It's an art gallery here in town. And they have a show every year around Valentine's Day that's called the Exotic Art Show. Oh, that's beautiful. And um, so I've been doing that for 20 years in a row. And this was one year where we uh, painted a model all white. And of course there was uh, guests that we just that were volunteers that I painted their arms and they had to sit and wait for me to get done with the, all the painting. So they walked around with colored hands. <laughs> colored hands. And, and actually the, the, the one that's blue, she was drinking a little too much that night. And, and by the time we did the photo shoot, it was hard to get her to even stand up. But, and then we hit them all behind the curtain. Oh. And then this is a little Photoshop because they, they did pop out of the curtain a little yes, bit more than that. that's but, beautiful. Yeah, that's that one. And then this one, um, this is not uh, body painting, but this is uh, Photoshop. So I got into doing a little bit of illustration okay. and all of the, the things that I learned with uh, doing oil painting and, uh -huh. and drawing on, on canvas and, and, and paper. Uh, when I found out you could do that with Photoshop, I was like, it's kind of neat. Yes. So the, the goal is to try to make it look like a painting. Yeah. But this is all done with Photoshop, which I, I usually use for photography things. Right. But it, it can be used as an art tool. And that's what this one was. That's very nice. And then this is back to body paint. This is another one that was done live at an art gallery. Lotus Art Gallery is where, where we did this. And um, I just kind of came up with this musical theme that's, that's kind of combining a lot of my, you know, I love music yes. and uh, I love playing piano. But this was a, a case of I wanted to make the piano. I had her laying, this Megan was the, the model. Uh -huh. And she, as she's laying, we made the piano perfect whenever she was laying flat. And then as she bent into the you know, just made the piano curves right. flow with the body. And this has really become one of my favorite paintings. As a matter of fact, um, this is, uh, this is the, the picture that I used on the cover of my mag uh, of my, my first book called Coats of Paint. And it, it wraps around to the back since it's yes, uh, you know, a nice lovely. long format. But yeah, so that's very uh, nice. That's one of my favorites for sure. And, and um, you know, kind of talking about the photography and, and how body painting you only get one chance to take a picture of that yeah. and, and then it's gone. You know, the, the, the painting goes away. So I started getting deeper and deeper into photography. And um, one of the things that once I had better equipment and so forth is I, I love taking pictures of events I was at, landscapes and whatever. But um, I found this uh, ad online it was for a company called Burning Hot Events. Uh -huh. And they do uh, concert reviews and concert okay. photography. So I got to working with them and you get to pick and choose kind of which concerts you want to yes. go see, but you don't get them all. Uh -huh. You know, some, sometimes you just don't get them. Well, when I saw Paul McCartney was coming to town, I was like, wow, that would be so cool. Didn't wow. think there was a chance of right. it happening, you know. <laughs> um, and sure enough, I got the call, you're on the list. So I got to go shoot Paul McCartney. Yeah, um, yeah, and it was, it was that's uh, an amazing shot. Also, it was from all the way back behind the soundboard. I went wow. to Tempe Camera and rented a, a huge lens. This this lens it was 400 millimeters, and I want to say it was just way mm -hmm. bigger than the camera. As much as that's the biggest lens I've ever used on my camera, mm -hmm. I got there and I was outgunned by every photographer there. <laughs> Everyone else had. They all had the same oh, idea. We had yes. to get that big one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's uh, so I love the music side of things yes. for sure, and it's it's been wonderful. Fun. And then um, speaking of music, uh, this this is a uh, a picture. I, I actually took this of myself. So I, I, I'm at my grand piano after doing a music video. Matter of fact, the music video is on uh, YouTube. Um, if you look Mark Greenwald up on YouTube, you'll find me. But um, uh, this was, I, 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 just, I just wanted a picture for in the video, but this kind of became my, Very my nice. portfolio. Yeah. I can see I, that being on a, a cover or something. Oh, thank you. Yes. Yeah, yeah. The, the funny thing about it was that I was taking the picture and then running around really fast because it was on a timer <laughs> and then sitting there and trying to get the, I the bet look. that was fun. Uh, there's, there's, a bunch, there's a bunch of outtakes for this for, for sure. Yeah. I can just see the little dog watching like, what's going what on there? Doing? Yeah, yeah. So true. So speaking of music, you're a songwriter. Are you singing also? I and sing. I play you, all the you instruments. You play the instruments. Oh, 
Yeah. See, I told you this guy just does it all I, here, and I, he's I, and a good. Th he's good at it. <laughs> I, I would say that I'm not a virtuoso at anything. So the 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 saying Jack, uh, Jack of all trades, master yeah. of none. I think I fit that pretty good. Cause I'm not necessarily there's there's a. You had Brandon in. Brandon's got you know on body pain. That kid is uh, just yeah, a firecracker. He's awesome. yes. You know, so so he's the younger generation taking mm -hmm. over and you know, passing the torch so to speak. But um, but you know, and the same with you know the guitarist. There's better guitarists right. than me, but I can get it. Uh, but you can, ready. but you can get it. I yeah, mean, that's the thing. You know, we're not going to be 100 at everything. Yeah, I mean, there's going to be the one thing that's where this me over. Yeah, but um, you're not going to get it all. So where can our audience find you? Well, the the landing point is my name dot com, markgreenwald dot com. That's okay. that's definitely the place to find links to everything. But I'm on Facebook and Instagram, and if you, it's a pretty unique name. So there's not yes. too many. I, I say that there's two Mark Greenwalds in Albatuki, believe it or not. Uh, and we and yeah, so we we run into each other. Actually, met each other at one point. But they're but, not a singer, performer, artist, body painter, and all that you are. Uh, I'm the one, if you see the body painter, you got the right one. Well, thanks for joining us today. It was so, such a pleasure. Such a pleasure and for me. And we look forward to hearing more from Mark Greenewald. All right. And thank you for joining us here today at Desert Wind Days, and we'll catch you next time. Today's episode of Desert Wood Days with Kathy Blaze was sponsored by Dork Publishing. Visit them at dorkpublishing.com. When I was growing up, my mom was extremely tidy. We were trained to put things back where we got them from. One day, when I walked into my mom's house, I felt like I walked to someone else's house. There was stuff everywhere. And just growing up, the way I grew up, and to see this transition was very alarming. When Sean talked to me, it was a wake-up call, and that's when I went to the doctor. Eva Marie smoked 12,000 packs of cigarettes over 15 years. She quit, and now there's a new lung cancer screening that could save her life. You stop smoking, now start screening. No matter how much you've smoked, early detection could save you. Talk to your doctor or learn more at savedbythescan.org. I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. Families don't have to talk about everything, but they should talk about how to plan for an emergency. Get tips and resources to make your family's emergency plan.